What we're looking at here are inelastic collisions. In our past few videos and days, we've been looking at elastic collisions. And in elastic collisions, we conserve momentum and we conserve energy. In elastic collisions or non-elastic collisions do not conserve energy. These are typically collisions where some amount of work is done on something after that collision happens or while that collision is occurring. Think of if you get into a car accident, you know, your bumper is ripped off of your car. Some amount of work had to be done on that bumper to do that. That's a loss of energy. You're not getting it back. Um, because of this, we have to approach these collision problems a little bit differently. We are still going to conserve momentum. That is still going to be a guaranteed play. But we can't conserve energy or work energy until after the collision. After the collision, we can do that. But before the collision, or rather during it, we're not allowed to do that. So to look at an example of something that occurs like this, we have a ballistic pendulum. Now, ballistic pendulums are very interesting. Um, we used them for years in order to determine the velocity or how fast uh, very, very small but fast-moving objects were traveling, um, i.e. bullets. Uh, if you shoot a bullet into a ballistic pendulum, the pendulum will rock back like this and lift up. It will gain some kinetic or some uh, potential energy due to gravity. And with that, and a little bit of mathematics that we're going to do, we can actually see how fast the bullet was initially traveling. So in this sample here, we have a 0 0.03 kilogram bullet. And even though we have a picture, I'm going to draw another one anyways. You know how I am with pictures. So here's 0 0.03 kilograms. And it's fired horizontally into a block of wood. Okay, and this block of wood has a mass of 0.45 kilograms. It's suspended by, and normally they use like two long rods, but like whatever, it's just, it's suspended, okay? The bullet is going to stick into the wood. Like the bullet penetrates the block of wood, but it stays in there. And because of that, what ends up happening is the pendulum swings back. So this is going to be the 0.45 from before, but it also has a bullet trapped inside. So the total mass of this is actually going to be 0.48 kilograms here, okay? And when this happened, this pendulum, this ballistic pendulum here, it actually rose up. It used to be at some height down here, and when it swung backwards, it gained some vertical height. You know, it went from this position to this position, and that is some height it gained. That's our gravitational potential energy. So that's our picture. That's what we're dealing with here. And we need to try to determine what the initial velocity of the bullet is. So what is this initial velocity of the bullet? Well, normally we'd start a problem by trying to first conserve momentum, because um, that's the one thing that we can actually conserve here. So let's try this out and see where it takes us. If we try our momentum conservation equation, all the initial momentums will equal the final momentums, what we're going to have is a combination of mv plus mv equals mv plus mv. And luckily for us, some of these things are stationary, so we don't have to worry about it. So if we're trying to conserve momentum, then what we're looking at here is some initial momentum from the bullet. So it's got this 0.03 kilograms multiplied by some initial velocity. And if we add that to the momentum from the block here, it doesn't have any momentum, so that's nothing. This has to equal the initial motion of this pendulum on impact. So what we haven't drawn is right here in the middle, there is an instant in time where the bullet has become lodged in the block but it really hasn't lifted up yet, okay? That instant of time, that is what we're gonna be looking at here. And that means there's some momentum occurring here. This is the mass of the bullet block system, 0.48 kilograms. And then the velocity 
of this block bullet system, or we're going to call it the velocity of the target, okay? This velocity of the target, we don't know that. And we don't know that simply because we don't know the initial velocity of the bullet. We're going to have to figure that out. But we do know that whatever velocity this target had once that bullet finally became lodged inside of it, that velocity is what carried this system upward. That was this upward moving velocity here, or this velocity that allowed the upward direction. So we can't conserve energy, but when we look at our energy here, this velocity here of the target, that was the velocity after the bullet bored through and it, you know, we lost some energy due to the work of that bullet boring through. But that velocity is very helpful because this velocity here is like the initial velocity of when that ballistic pendulum starts to swing upwards. So what we can do here is we can actually say this. We can use um, a combination of kinetic energy and potential energies. When that bullet is lodged in at the bottom, that block bullet system now has some velocity there. And if we look at that velocity as a kinetic energy, we can say it's got some one half times the mass of 0.48 times this block bullet target velocity squared. And because it is at what we're gonna call the bottom, and we'll call this bottom the reference position, there's no kinetic energy there. When it swings to the top, the block and bullet come to rest. They're at like their maximum height. So there's no kinetic energy there. But what we do have now is a gravitational potential. We have an MGH. And since that's the mass of both the block and the bullet lodged together, that's gonna be 0.48 multiplied by gravity, 9.8 multiplied by the height. And in this problem, we were given that height. It swings 0.7 meters above its initial level. So that's 0.7. So what we're actually gonna do now is we're gonna work this problem backwards. We're going to solve for VT, plug it back into the momentum equation, and then solve for our initial velocity of the bullet before it lost that energy. So if we go ahead and do this, uh, we'll have to solve for this VT first. Um, in order to solve for VT, uh, an interesting thing we see is that because the kinetic energy is just one half mv squared, these masses are the same, so the 0.48 went away here. So the only thing we really have to do is multiply by 2. So we get vt squared equals 2 times 9.8 times 0.7. And then to get rid of the square, we know that we can just take the square root of that. Interestingly enough, this equation ends up looking as the square root of 2g delta h. With If you know anything about fluid dynamics, this is actually the same setup for Torricelli's equation in the AP Physics 2 class. And that's because Torricelli's equation, which is derived from Bernoulli's, is really just a conservation of energy equation, which is exactly what we just did. So this idea comes back for other physics topics. But we now have the VT here. And we can say that the uh, target velocity after that bullet has got lodged in is some value there. And we're just gonna kind of leave it like this for a second. We're just gonna carry it through, okay? So if now we wanna figure out, look, we've got VT, let's plug it back up into our momentum equation here. We can write the following. We can say that 0.03 times the initial bullet velocity, which is what we want, that equals, and then what we're gonna have here is 0.48 times this VT. And we know this VT in this case uh, we've just figured this out as the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.7. So if we want to get VI by itself, the only thing we need to do is divide by the 0.03. So we do that. We divide by the 0.03, wing, wing. And finally, throwing in all these numbers, we'll get our actual initial velocity for the bullet. Careful when you're entering these numbers, though. Um, I like to take 2 times 9.8 times 0.7, get a number, square root it, multiply that by the 0.48, divide that by the 0.03. In the end, though, you should get something around, give or take with some rounding, 
meters per second, okay? So it was very similar to what we've done for elastic collisions, but there's this little like stop point in the middle where we can't just immediately combine these equations together. Uh, we have to use one to get to the other, and that is simply because there is some work being done on the problem, you know, with the block itself, the wooden block that the bullet hit is being ripped apart um, or bored out. So to do that, we took this idea of an energy and then related it back to the conservation of momentum, okay? But it's not too bad of a problem of a ballistic pendulum, um, but it is something to kind of recognize that while we do conserve momentum, we're not conserving energy, and we kind of have to backtrack it to solve this out. But that's the ballistic pendulum. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we'll see some more practice problems for inelastic collisions later. But for now, this is finished. Adios, and take it easy.